and it is hallelujah now playoff time and TV play by play. Man of the hour, Kevin Ray joins us down the right to the guest line. Kevin, uh, I'd like to introduce myself, Rock, along with my partner here, Manuch. <laughs> How you doing? Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, so, Rock, so were you, is that your given name from your mother? Is that what's on your birth certificate? What's the, what's the full name again? I'm it's not sure uh, we... Mike Morocco or Michael Paul Morocco. So the Morocco is a Mike nickname Morocco. Rock I got now in that college. Is, that's a name that I believe I know. Rock, okay, now it's coming <laughs> back to me. Now, now it's. <laughs> hey, how you doing, buddy? You doing good? What's up, K Ray? I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great, boys. <laughs> how how much fun is this for you? I mean, you've been a broadcaster a long time, but when it gets to the playoffs, I mean, you've caught some you know great games, both playoffs and regular season. But here they are, yeah, seven game set now with with Minnesota. Uh, these teams have never met each other in the playoffs. But how excited do you get just as just what you do for a living? Yeah, I mean, look, the, these are the games, no different than coaches, players, you know, people in the in the organization. These are the games that, you know, you, you live for. Mm -hmm. These are the games that, you know, you anxiously await, um, you know, when you're doing game 53 in Cleveland in January when it's, uh, you know, three degrees. You're like, just, just <laughs> get me to April, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, did did the Wolves the last time they played kind of were they a little vanilla? Maybe maybe they didn't want to show the Suns what was going to happen. I know they've owned them this year, but you know, I was I was reading some reports in Minnesota, and they kept saying, "Oh yeah, they didn't want to show them anything that game." You buy into any of that? Show them anything? They, they played eighty-one games. What wasn't there to, exactly. to see or be or or be seen? I mean, this was a team that had a chance if they won to grab the top spot in the Western Conference to have home court advantage. So, you know that that feels like uh, some revisionist history and uh, uh, you know a, a fan base and media base that's a little nervous because. Yep. You know, it's funny. I I saw a guy's tweet as we were leaving town that that day. A guy's tweet, and you could kind of, you know, you kind of felt his pain because he said, "Best Wolves team in my lifetime, and it will be over very soon." <laughs> 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 you know, there there's just this this fatalistic approach, and I guess that's the way that Minnesota sports fans kind of feel about you know, I mean, when you consider what they've been through with the NFL and. And with, you know, with their baseball team and now with basketball, you know, best team in 20 years. And there's certainly a, a level of, you know, anxious anticipation, but also I think a level of real nervousness of because of the team that they've drawn in the first round. Kevin, it's interesting when you watch the game, you watch these three games, it, it looks like the, the, the Suns are really going after Anthony Edwards. And, you know, besides Gobert and, and Crosby Towns, but it seems like, you know, you, you go after him, you go after him, he gets frustrated because they're all on him, and he's pretty much doesn't seem like he can create his own shot per se. But is that going to be pretty much the game plan again to really attack him, frustrate him like we saw the other night last Sunday? Yeah, and look, the, the Suns are, are doing to Anthony Edwards what teams have been doing the last few years to Devin Booker. You know, Ant-Man is is their number one score. He is their number one option. And if you can neutralize and limit, you know, A, the touches and really challenge every shot attempt, that's what happens with guys. And, and especially in the playoffs, you, you do, you get frustrated because the, you know, the looks that you were getting in the regular season aren't there. The shots that were falling in the regular season aren't falling. And, you're you're suddenly realizing, oh, chill. well, that was you know that was a, a game in February that I don't want to say didn't have any meaning, but you know this is huge, and you will see that especially with young players, and and oftentimes, and this is the conversation I've had with a few people is like, you know, you want to get guys like Ant sped up and get them into thinking, you know, having this internal clock where they think, oh, I, I got to make the next play. Cause I missed the last two. I got to make the next play. Well, then, then you kind of start playing, you know, hero ball, sure. which minimizes touches for Carl Anthony towns or Rudy Gobert. Um, and like I say, th those are all the things that you are trying to create. 
the Suns have done a, a wonderful job of, you know, running multiple bodies at Ant and also closing off his, his driving lanes and, and the gaps. They've been really good there. Uh, that's, that's going to be the key. You know, can they do that? in order to be the first team to secure four wins that that's you know one of the great questions coming into this series and on top of that uh you know carl anthony towns or cat man what do you got ant man cat man kd book you get all kinds of brief initials for this game uh there kevin ray um when you watch him he said i heard an interview yesterday he said he throws about 50 60 percent of what he typically is well i can't the average you know i'm i'm kind of that novice that watches these guys when you watched him last week did you see that kind of second or third gear in him, or what more will we see if he's only at forty or fifty percent? Yeah, I just you know, I, or is that I possum, K? Or is that just him playing it, possum? Yeah, I, that's just him playing possum. And and again, a a a a player and a team, you know, that has had, like I say, an exceptional season. Yes. But again, you were you were playing at home with a chance to secure the number one seed in the conference. So any any idea that somebody was a you know playing possum or you know I was I only want to show them you know maybe sixty percent of what I mean. There's nothing that Ant you know would have done in that game that would have caught the Suns off guard. I mean, right. he's played an entire season. He's an All Star. So. Again, I, I think that that was just kind of an uncomfortable response to, yeah, they've beaten you three times and they've beaten you pretty soundly. So, what are you what are you going to do differently here? Kevin yeah, Ray, right. joining us here, Rocket Manuch, with Jimmy B, Fox Sports Nine Ten. Is it? Let's talk about Bradley Beal, of course. What he has been able to do over the last few weeks is it fair to say that when it comes to pressure, Beal has taken pressure off of Booker and Durant. At the same time, those guys have taken pressure off of Beal. Now it's all coming together. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and and you know the 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 pressure for them isn't what you know I think people would would assume pressure is. It, okay. It's just it's really and it, it's the, the, the phrase that uh, you'll hear coaches use and Frank has talked about it. But you know just the gravity on the floor and what what Bradley Beal being in attack mode can do for Kevin Durant. For Devin Booker, and more importantly, when he when he's on the floor with that second unit, yes, because now you really have a legitimate, you know, high high end scoring threat in Bradley Meal. I mean, this is a dude that that you know led the league in scoring, and so all of a sudden you've got Bradley Beal matched up against you know your bench guys, and that's that usually doesn't fare very well. And I think that he has in the last two two three weeks really found a great balance in being that facilitator. But, you know, Book and KD had been in his ear to continue to hunt for those opportunities. And if they're there, when he's on the floor with them, you take them. Yes. Because then you're really seeing the impact of, of the big three. And I don't think people can fully wrap their head around how challenging it was for Brad. One, he had missed all that time due to the injury. And now you're thrust into this situation where you're another elite scorer with two other elite scorers. And at some point, and this is where I say, you know, I hope fans really, truly appreciate the sacrifice that he has made because he said, okay. And in addition to, you know, just, just the, the coaches talking with him, but, but he really had to make that ultimate decision to say, okay, I'm going to step back. I'm going to be the first guy to step back because I know that I can run the point here and set my guys up and be a true facilitator. And I think once he was able to grasp that, but then also at the prodding of Book and KD saying, yeah, but don't forget, you're still an elite score because he was still really trying to, you know, he, he was challenged in trying to find that balance. He went through a stretch where he was, really passing up a lot of open looks. And when he does that, then it makes it easy on the defense. When he is in attack mode, as we've seen the last two weeks, you can see the kind of wide open looks that Book and KD get. And you're talking about two of the best mid-range guys in the league at 18 to 20 feet. So it, it's just, it's been 
you know, pretty fun to watch both for him and for the rest of the team. Kevin, when it comes to maybe an X factor, we know the big three. Who is it that you think may uh, maybe a guy that's going to not necessarily step up for the first time? He's already stepped up, but could be a, a an X factor in this series. Well, I you know I'll I'll, I'll give you two. Okay. Uh, I know you asked for one, but that's I'll fine. give you two, and it's 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 uh, in this series it's Nurk. Because he's played, he's played Gobert really well, um, and it really wasn't until Nurk got into foul trouble on Sunday, when he had to go out, that Rudy had his best stretch, uh, not just on Sunday, but in in all three of the games. You know, Nurk's got a big body. I think he's become a much better defender than you know. He he came in, people were critical of his defense. And, you know, what people forget, a little bit like, you know, a little bit like with, with Brad, you know, he played on a bad team for the last four plus years of his career. And when you do that, you know, people really start hunting every single flaw, but not taking into consideration who you are playing alongside of. And Nurk has really worked hard on his defense. So I think Nurk being able to stay out of foul trouble, stay on the floor, you know, and matching up against Gobert. And then, of course, you know, Grayson, you, you look at what Grayson was able to do last week in addition to Beal. Uh, you, you know, it was Brad and Grayson who really kind of got the scoring started for the Suns in that game. So those are the two guys that, that I look for from, you know, from the Phoenix uh, side of the fence. It was good to see Al uh, get rewarded. Did, did you expect that to come in to happen during the season? It doesn't yeah. normally happen. Yeah, I, I was. I well, Break. It doesn't normally happen. But I knew the moment that he became eligible, uh, I, you know, based on a what Matt had been saying, the desire to get him and Royce O'Neal resigned. But you know, the and I had had some people say they were really concerned that Grayson, because of his season and because of the Suns being, you know, in the financial situation they're in, uh, in terms of going out and getting somebody else, that you know Grayson would command top dollar in free agency. But what they didn't take into account, Grayson's tired of moving, man. You know, he's, he's bounced around in a short period of time. And he loves this team. He loves this city. And uh, for anybody that, you know, has a significant other, uh, his wife loves the city and the people <laughs> and being grounded. You know, yeah. and it, the, the, the old adage, you know, happy wife, happy life. Well, hey, that, man, that brother. Really that was certainly one of the lead factors for Grayson, but he really does. He just loves everything that the organization, you know, has given him uh, the opportunities that this team has given him to really show off that he's way more than just a three point shooter. And, Oh, it just happens to be that he's the league leader in three point shooting. But this guy has brought so much more to the floor than so many fans imagine. I mean, I, I get it all the time. People are like, man, I didn't know he could do that. Well, I had no idea that he was capable of that. He just hadn't been in a position to be able to show all those other layers of his game. But, you know, I, I, I continue to say it. He and Nurk, to me, have been kind of the unsung MVPs of this season. One, because of their availability. And two, just, you know, their their team first mentality. Kev, thank you. I know you got a big steak dinner ahead of you. So I appreciate you jumping on with us, man. And uh, we hope we can catch up with you for a long time during this run. Yeah, 64 ounce uh and hopefully i get the t-shirt and the hat this time <laughs> <laughs> that's the tv play-by-play voice kevin ray joining us here you can follow him on twitter great follow k1 voice appreciate his time we'll continue we're out here right toyota it's fox sport check this out this is the hurt you're excited i'm excited with colin cowper